Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, Good evening. So I'm, going to, I'm going to call a meeting to order at, at 6.02. Um, we do have uh, Shelly with us and Sandy Levine. I don't see anyone else other than the select board. So um, we've got an interesting situation on our hands here. I'm, I'm sure most of you saw uh, Sarah's email this afternoon or saw it on the news. The governor has not signed H42 as of yet. So that means as of right now, we have no ability to reconsider. Well, we have an, let me say this correctly. We have no ability to have an Australian ballot town meeting. What I'm going to propose is that we have a motion which says, should the governor sign Act 42 and allow Australian ballot at town meeting, we will go with Australian ballot. That would be the that would be the motion, and then we have to consider this other. Uh, we have to do our new uh, do our new warning. Uh, I have not heard any. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in the press, but nobody seems to say. You know, is he planning to sign it? Is he not going to sign it? I don't know. And then if he doesn't sign it, then we're right back to where we were before this meeting. Now, if the motion doesn't, if that motion or proposed motion doesn't pass, then we're right back there anyway. We're back to an in-person, uh, in-person meeting. Does that make sense to everyone? Uh, are you sure that's legal? Am I sure? I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how else to do it, Liz. I mean, the other, the only other way to do it is to uh, adjourn the meeting and reconvene after he says he either signs it or doesn't, but I hate to do that. But that's that, that I think is the other choice. So hmm. I don't know, what do you think? I, I don't know. I would just double, um, Susan Clark thought that we weren't going to, um, to, uh, we were going to wait a day to vote on it. So she wasn't going to join, but she said that, I think she's going to sign on right now. I would just double check that there's nothing weird about that, like agreeing to do something before it's done, but whatever. Yeah, go ahead, Sarah. You can take a provisional vote. You can say, and Susan and I talked about this, so I didn't think we were going to wait, but um, you can say, if you can make a motion that says, if this passes, we will do thus and such. If this doesn't passes, then we will do that. Then either way, you can say, we'll approve, we'll approve the warning. If we do decide to go for Australian ballot, we'll approve that warning. And if we, and if that's not an option, then we'll approve the other warning. I mean, you're not saying what would be illegal would be for you tonight to say, have a motion that says we're going to hold meeting by Australian ballot. Cause you can't do that okay. right now. Yeah. So okay. what's driving the reconsideration? I mean, didn't we vote on this in the last meeting and it passed to, to hold it in person? Victor asked for it. Victor requested a reconsideration and I allowed it. Can can we hear from Victor as to um, what his thinking is as far as asking for the reconsideration? Sure we can. Sure we can. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my thinking was... Um, that um, you know, uh, we still have uh, we still have COVID around. Um, there's a lot of people that uh, are have uh, immune or their immune systems are compromised and cannot cannot attend. Uh, only uh, like myself. And so I just thought it was, uh, I just thought it was, uh, you know, more prudent to uh, see we have this ability this year to uh, defer the in-person meeting and uh, go to Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. And to give more people, as we said, 
uh, get more people opportunity to uh, be cautious or or to vote in general. Um, as you know, Randy, we all said that uh, uh, when we first talked about it, I think Liz was first and she wanted an in-person meeting. And I said that uh, uh, I'd like to see Australian ballot because it gives more people an opportunity. I think Phil was next and said he agreed. And I think Peter said he agreed. And it was a pretty much, uh, you know, we had uh, four, four out of the five board members uh, seemed to be supporting it. Uh, and then you, then we talked about <clears throat> uh, if we had a voice at a in-person meeting that we would put the article in and, uh, every, and it, it just changed kind of quickly. And I still think our, our health, uh, our health concerns uh, really aren't met. I mean, I've got a choice uh, along with maybe some other member uh, here to either um, go to the meeting uh, or uh, just don't vote because of my health concern. And I don't like that too well. And I know so, some you know, people have said that they really, well, I, I mean, I don't know. Didn't you indicate that you weren't too concerned about uh, COVID, Randy? Myself? Yeah. I no. Believe, I, I believe that, I believe that uh, you know, folks have had ample opportunities to be vaccinated if they so choose. Um, I think that, uh, you know, folks still have the option of wearing masks if they so choose. Um, I don't personally feel that uh, COVID in and itself is a reason to not have an in-person town meeting this year. That's my personal it. feelings. I, I understand that you may have, you know, different thoughts and a different situation. Um, you know, folks are typically going out in public um, to do their shopping, to do their banking, to do all kinds of other things underneath, you know, the existing situation. And and for me, I just don't think we're at a point where um, shifting from an in-person meeting strictly because of COVID is is something that I I feel is necessary. Is it just COVID, or maybe another strain, or maybe a, another respiratory possibility? I checked with I checked with health uh, Department of Health this week, and uh, they're you know they can't advocate one way or the other, but they said that uh, the best the best uh, uh, possibility is uh, of not contacting anything is to uh, you know be distance and uh, avoid large crowds. I mean, you I I I when I go to the grocery store, the bank or uh, Hey, you go to the hospital this week, all of the things I did, we were wearing a mask, but to, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's reasonable to think that everybody should wear a mask for whatever, two or three hours for a town meeting when we really don't have to. I'm not so, saying, I'm not advocating that people have to wear masks and, and it's quite the contrary. Um, you know, if folks so choose to, then that's completely up to them. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, there's risk everywhere. Um, and I just, for me, again, I just don't feel like the shift here is warranted, but okay. that's just me. I, I just, I just have uh, one other thought about all this and that is, uh, maybe germane to what we're doing tonight and maybe not, but what I, just to be clear, what I believe I said at the last meeting is, you know, I think we're down, we're headed down the path of going to Australian ballot, however we get there. And the reason I say that is basically all the reasons Victor and others have been saying, I believe in democracy and I believe in participation and having the same or relatively the same small group of people every year 
make a decision on our town budget. I love town meeting. I love the idea of town meeting, but I don't like the idea of that of that very similar small group of people uh, voting on the budget every year. So, and I know Randy, you agree with me. I'll get to I'll get to you in a minute. Absolutely. So, you know, whether we whether we go in person this year and put that article on there and see what happens, you know, that seemed to me like seemed to me like one way to go. On the other hand, um, I did have a, a fairly long conversation with our representative uh, to the legislature, and I pointed out this inconsistency to her. I said, it makes no sense to me that there is no mechanism by which we can vote on an Australian ballot just on the matter of whether we want to conduct our town meeting business on Australian ballot and therefore get a much larger percentage of the town voters to tell us how they feel about it rather than rather than hope that or think that somehow you know at an in-person town meeting we're going to pass that article when obviously the people who are at town meeting are likely to be the ones who like town meeting and they're going to vote to keep it or likely vote to keep it so in terms of what we do this year to tell you the truth i'm right on the fence i ironically will not be able to attend an in-person town meeting because my immune system is going to be compromised. So, you know, I'm going to be able to, I'm not going to be able to vote if we have an in-person town meeting and I'm going to be able to speak, but just, you know, speak on the speaker if we have an in-person town meeting. And I'm What's concerned it? about, go uh, ahead, Randy. I was just going to ask about the feedback that you received when you posed that in that conversation. Did you receive any real feedback on that? No, no. What so, are you talking about, Randy? Uh, his conversation with uh, representatives about uh, the ability to to pose the question about Australian ballot. The 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 well, switch. She, uh, to I, shouldn't say, ballot. I shouldn't say nothing, Randy. She agreed with me. She said, "Yeah, I think I think that makes sense." She said, "But unfortunately, the mechanism to do this." Is that is Act 42, and the day I talked to her, that had already been passed by the House and gone. You know, the ship had sailed. Now that isn't to say, you know, they can't put in another bill to allow that. Who knows? She promised me she would look into it and work on it and get back to me. But of course, here she is. She's a freshman legislator. She has no power. She does serve on the Judiciary Committee, which maybe is interesting. I don't know. Can I uh, weigh in? Yes. Um, so, you know, I feel like it does sort of pose a little bit of a problem if we were to have it in person, um, you know, if Vic didn't feel comfortable being there and Peter, you're definitely not going to be there. Um, Phil won't be up there representing us because he will be not on the board anymore. Um, will he or not? He won't be. No, he's still, he's still on the board until... 7 p.m. <laughs> um, so it sort of leaves, I guess that would leave if, well, then that would be three of us up there. Um, and there is a point if, um, I mean, it goes both ways, right? So if, if the majority of the, if, if three out of two or four out of five board members want to put on, you know, want to move to Australian ballot for the budget vote and the special article vote by not having town meeting, at least the way it stands right now, by not having town meeting, this will be put off for another year. And maybe the legislature will act. Maybe the legislature will act, maybe they won't. And that's just the understanding that if we were to, to put it off, that this idea of moving away from or putting on the ballot um, for, the, for the municipal and special articles is going to have to be postponed for another really two years, right? Because you still have to have the town meeting and then you have, so it would be 2025, right? Because in 2024 well, is when you have the believe, vote, I'm and then not, 2025 would be the Australian ballot, the next Australian ballot. 
So the only it other thing I thought of, and I don't know whether I don't know whether this works or not, but you know, we can call a special town meeting. Oh fuckers. <laughs> Heard that, Susan. <laughs> I'm just You're saying not on mute. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. It's like, excuse me, but I mean, if if you really are pro-democracy, you don't call a special town meeting for this. You you know better than that, Peter. No, no, no. A special I'm, town I'm meeting okay. is for an emergency, and it's for when you uh, when you have something that can't be acted on a town meeting. If you, I, I'm sorry, I, that 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 just felt disingenuous to me. Oh, let's you know because you know you'll get us always. We'll get a smaller turnout at, at a special. We're not going to we're not going to have a special town meeting. I just threw that out there. I hate special. What does Hal meetings. think? Is he there? Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. Um, I think I think Vic is raising a a, a a valid concern that we really didn't discuss a whole lot when we were at the meeting. And when I heard that um, you had asked for reconsideration, I in fact did think about you, Peter, and whether or not. <clears throat> you'd be able to attend. Um, I guess if, if in fact the governor um, signs this within the next couple of days and we figure out how to do our kind of conditional votes, um, I, I'm in favor of uh, going, you know, back to the, remote um, information meeting and voting by Australian ballot and then seeing what um, what we might be able to do in the legislature to see if we could get some other support for the mechanism to change town meeting because that is really difficult right now. But um, anyway, yeah. Okay. So Liz, where are you? Where are you on this? Um, I, I can I can go either way. You know, I um, I respect Vic and your concerns of not being there, and I also sort of don't like the idea of um, you know having you guys be remote at the meeting. It would be better to have you in person. Um, but that also means then we have to do, we have to plan an informational meeting, a public informational meeting too, right? If we, yes. this passes. Yeah. Um, and so I'll, I'll, you know, I, I'll go either way. I mean, the other problem with a, with a public information meeting is, is that is that, that can't, can that be a, can that be a hybrid meeting? Yeah, that's the, that can. Yes, yeah, that can be. So we can, you know, that's the whole point is that the, the, is the whole point is that COVID, COVID prevents people from gathering in mass. So in that case, your informational meeting can be by Zoom, you know, however you want it to be. But that's only if H42 goes through forward. If H42 doesn't go forward, then you don't have to have an informational meeting. You'll simply have town meeting. Right. And Sarah, you said the uh, timing on this is potentially by Thursday that the governor will. So the, the story on. is he's got five days to sign it. If he doesn't sign it automatically goes into law. So he's, um, if it just oh. sits on his desk. So if he doesn't sign it, I suppose, uh, you know, I, the, the story that I got from VT Digger is that he may sign it tomorrow. He will probably sign it. He told the reporter, I actually heard him by Thursday, he'll make a decision. Okay. If he doesn't sign it by Friday, it goes into law because that's five days. I see you, Victor. Hold on one sec. Victor? Yes. You uh, have your hand up? Yeah. Um, yeah, I talked with the governor's office today and uh, they got it on Friday. And uh, she said that uh, he has five days to do it. And uh, it would, some decision would be made by, I believe she said Thursday. Right. And uh, the other thing is, it's, you know, uh, our names have been thrown at. This has been put out there 
as being compromised, but I've also talked to some other people and it's not that just, it, it, it's not just me, it's on the, on the select board. Um, I spoke yesterday with a 96 year old uh, sex voter. And he said that he voted, but the only way he could vote is if it, he's, you know, they sent him a ballot. He was, it wasn't a matter of COVID. It was a matter, he was 96 years old and he wasn't going to stand in line out there and he wasn't going to set in the, set in the uh, school with, uh, with the, all the people that uh, are there because he, he wasn't comfortable uh, health-wise either. Um, Another person just down the road by Phil says that his wife was, was uh, you know, compromised and he wasn't going to go, but he, he voted, he votes every vote. I think the big issue is there's, I don't know, is uh, maybe, uh, well, we don't realize how many people just don't go to town meeting. Uh, for health reasons other than COVID. Well, I, think I think that's right. So is, is there any other, Susan, do you have any, Susan Clark, do you have anything else you want to say on this issue? Hi guys. Um, yeah, I think this is a really important conversation and it sounds like you're, uh, you, you you could go in any, any, I, I, it, I get it. It's really on the fence and it could go in multiple directions. I think that one of the things that's really the, the place that I'm putting my energy professionally and personally around public engagement is thinking about the whole year um, and sort of zooming out. Um, Cause when we talk really specifically about Australian ballot versus town meeting, that's a, um, that's an either or. And I, um, I really, yeah, and yes, it is an either or, and we, and you guys need to make this decision in Middlesex. Um, if we pick um, a town meeting, then we lose on quantity, and that, and Randy and Vic, and you guys have been very articulate about that, and it's absolutely true. We get more people if we only do ballot, so quantity is really important. But quality is also really important, and people in uh, Middlesex have articulated. You've heard the whole long list, and uh, of, of all the reasons why we um, meeting um, together and deliberating on things. You know, I don't have, I don't need to rehearse all of those. They're both good. They're they're both good, and it's this is like crap. It's the good guys versus the good guys. You know, I, I don't want to have to choose. Yes, we have to choose on Australian ballot versus town meeting, but I don't want to trade off of quantity and quality. I want us to find a balance. And if that means we switch to Australian ballot, but we have a really vibrant fall meeting where before you guys have made decisions on the, on the budget, we bring, we have, you know, really interesting small group discussions that aren't so intimidating because you don't have to give a speech where you talk about your values in the town. Or if it means that we keep our town meeting, but we use consensors, which are these little handheld things. So you never have to vote by voice. It's, it's all, um, electronic. There's so many cool creative things that we could be doing. So I guess the advantage of um, putting this off for a year would be that we could do some of that exploration, which which a bunch of towns are doing right now. I was just talking with the, uh, the, the rural caucus at the legislature right now, and there are a bunch of towns that are like having the same question, same, same uh, discussion. Oh, well, we're not the um, only ones. We're no, we're not the only ones. And there is an only one answer. I think that both, I, I, I really value both of these sides, but I, I, I would love if the, um, I would love the select board um, to be thinking um, sort of about their, their leadership role and being able to, you know, and not, not that you guys have to do the work, but, you know, inspire the work um, so that, so that the communities can think, the community can think, okay, if we switch the ballot, how are we going to, you know, keep, keep people, keep people. So Susan, one, one thing that I've been, I've been thinking about, which is right along the lines you're talking about is, you know, traditionally, as we all know, information meetings are poorly attended. Right. So how do we create at the very least, and I'm all for other, other things too, but how do we create an information meeting, which is going to attract a broad group of people from the community? Because if all we get is five or six people at the information meeting, yes, it's a legal requirement, but it's a joke. But if all of a sudden we got 
a few hundred people at the information meeting, then it would be meaningful. Well, and yeah, and that goes back to, not that we're gonna solve this tonight, but that goes back to Frank Bryan's research at UVM. He, he just said that the, the fewer things we have to decide, the, um, the fewer meaningful issues that we have to decide at our town meetings, the more town meeting participation will go down. So he blames you know, the legislature for that. But um, what that means is maybe the stuff we're asking people at town meeting isn't the most interesting thing to be at. Maybe it's not the thing, they, they trust the select board to make a good budget, Vote on that by a strong ballot, fine, rubber stamp. But what we really need their input in uh, on is, um, well, like, for example, this town hall thing that we're deciding right now. That uh, That's going to take not only creative thinking, but also creative fundraising, because the tax base cannot support the kinds of infrastructure that our town wants. And so let's go to large donors. Let's go to grant making and present them with a united front. Show them that Middlesex is all on the same page and we you know yeah we have our differences but we can work through them donors give to success so how can we you know as a community be asking people questions that they actually care about and want to, not the gravel budget you know like because because we trust you on that yep. you know but stuff that they actually know about so i think we're we're, we're getting down to a little bit of of uh beating a dead horse here unless somebody else has something new and different to uh to add to the discussion is somebody willing and ready to make a motion I'll, yeah i'll make the motion that uh uh in light of uh the governor signing uh I think it's age 42 this week that we will go to an uh, Australian ballot uh, town meeting. Um, I think that's all I have to say. And the motion should, should I believe, say that it's, it's for this year only, which is all we have the authority to do. That's yeah. fine. That, yes, of course, that's for this year only. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. okay. Um, so it's been moved and seconded that we, uh, with the contingency that the governor signs Act 42, uh, that we will go to Australian ballot for this year's town meeting. And uh, then we will go ahead and make a decision about whether we're going to mail out ballots and also review the warning that we need to create for that, for that meeting. Uh, so so all those in favor of that motion, raise your hand or say aye. 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 Randy, you're a no? I'm a no. Okay. So it's it's four to one. The motion, the motion carries and we've uh, and we've made our decision. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I mean this this is a really tough uh, it's a it's a tough one. It's a tough one for me, but uh, I really thought a lot about this after uh, after the meeting, and I thought, you know, I just really wonder if we were doing the right thing. So anyway, we've we've done it. So we need to move on to uh, Sarah prepared a warning for the Australian ballot. I prepared two warnings, and I I think you guys should vote on both just in case something happens to H forty two. Okay. Do we need to go one at a time or can we do them both together? I would do them one at a time. Okay. Well, the one I have in front of me, I didn't, I didn't print out the, uh, the other one. I apologize. I don't have that in front of me, but I have the, I have the one, the Australian ballot one, not the in-person one, but I Peter, believe, we, yeah. I just want to just do you want me to explain, explain the difference between the two of sure. them or? That'd be, that'd be great. Yes. Okay. So, Besides the opening, which uh, notes that the voting will be in town hall and, uh, you know, cites Act 42, instead of saying the that will be at Romney at 433 Shady Real Road, we don't have Article 3, which is to receive and act upon the reports of town officers, because there will be no article, article 3, and we do not have the sick vote, uh, Article 6 and 7 as appear on the floor vote. Um, Hold on. We're not, we don't have Articles 7 and 8 that has appear on the floor vote uh, but, well, warning, which is shall the budget article be voted by Australian ballot. 
immediately after the budget decision? And shall the public questions be voted on uh, Australian ballot immediate after the previous article decision? So those are not going to be on there. And otherwise, otherwise it's the exact same. Of course, there's nothing about uh, to transact any other business that may legally become before the meeting. So that's not there. But other than those are the those are the differences. So Article Three, Seven, and Eight. Three, Seven, and Eight are in the in the from the original ballot from the floor vote are gone. They've just been renumbered onto the uh, Australian ballot. So, um, does the motion have to be kind of an either or? I mean, because we we really can't warn approval of two. I know. It sucks. Right. So, <laughs> let me, so if, if okay, let me let me just take a stab at this. In the event that the governor um, assigns, oh, is it Act Forty? Yes. Yes. Act Forty Two. Then, or, or it goes into law. I think maybe because he could not or sign. Or it goes it. into law. Right. Mm -hmm. Then now, I'm like, wait a minute. So it seems, it seems like this is going to happen one way or another. I guess what he can do is he can re he can um, he, he can he veto can, he can veto it, and then you'd have to get a, then it would have to go back to the legislature, and there would have mm -hmm. to be a majority, a majority vote, I think, of some sort yeah. to pass it. Right. Okay. Um, override. Override. Yeah. Right. Whatever that so, number. Is. But yeah. So let me let me let me try let me try this. I I think we can do one motion, and the motion is if the governor signs Act Forty Two or and it comes into law, we adopt the warning for the the revised the revised warning for the Australian ballot. If not, and we're back to having an in town meeting, we approve the in the town meeting uh can we do that sure sure why not <laughs> yeah covered all your bases i mean that because i don't think we can approve two so by yeah, you're right that, we're not it's be either we're saying, if something happens we approve this one if it doesn't happen we approve the other one right as long as you get that in the motion because that's what you're you're not saying we're approving two warnings you're just put, right. you're saying an either or situation yeah it's an, an algorithm yeah yep. So can you, so did can you make you that a motion? That, uh, I can make it a motion when you do when you when I when I write the minutes. Okay. All Peter, right. was that a motion? Well, I'm hoping you were making the motion. I was just giving okay. it to you. Okay. I, I'm I'm making the motion as Peter stated it. Okay. <laughs> hey, is, there a, is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Victor. All all in favor of that that carefully crafted uh, warning that <laughs> Our clerk is going to prepare for us. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I just want you. I just want to be clear, not to be beleaguer this, but you do realize that if we do have town uh, town meeting, we will be asking those questions of the voters from the floor. You understand that, right? Everybody's clear on that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have one more thing to consider, and that is. Uh, are we going to send out ballots to all non-challenged registered voters? Or are we going to ask people to request ballots? My feeling on that is if we're doing this, we should send out the ballots. And I know yeah. there's expense involved in doing that, but I just think it's the right thing to do. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I'd make a motion to send out ballots to every non-challenged voter. Active, Active non-challenged voter. Okay. Second. Second to that. Victor, second. Second. Um, all in favor of the motion to send out ballots to all non-challenged voters, please say aye. Or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any no's? Okay. Dick, Dick seconded that. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. So I hope and pray we've done the right thing, guys. I think we have. I think we have.
And I appreciate everybody's thoughts, time, and attention. I mean, there's no matter what, there's going to be more work to do on this issue. And I appreciate uh, Susan Clark's thoughts, and we all need to be thinking about this. But uh, right now, nobody said I can't have a cocktail yet, so I'm going to go have one and have my dinner, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for your time and attention. Have a good Bye. Bye. Thank you.